Hey there, colour correction in Premiere Pro is a lot easier if you've got one of these colour reference cards you can make use of. Basically these cards have different squares or rectangles on them and you can use these squares in post-processing to make sure you've got accurate colours in your footage. Basically these squares are calibrated and they're accurate which means you can use them as references when you're performing your colour correction. There's all different shapes and sizes and manufacturers of these types of cards. This particular one is made by X-Rite. This is not a sponsored video by the way. I'll put a link to this exact model in the description below but there's all different manufacturers and different shapes and sizes for different applications. This particular one is really handy because you can fit it in a backpack and take it out on location with you. To use these colour correction cards what you need is a few frames with the card in the shot. Normally you're going to get your talent to hold this or you could also clip it onto a tripod if you're filming on your own and then just move the card left to right slowly and also up and down. Basically you want to make sure that you get at least a few frames where there's no reflections on any of these squares or bars. If you do have reflections on these squares or bars, it's gonna make it a lot harder to use this in post-production. If you're filming a scenic outdoor scene and there's no talent, what you can do is just place this at a reasonable position somewhere in the frame, take a few shots or a few seconds of footage and then remove it from the frame and then film the actual shot that you want to get. If you're filming product shots, you can just pop it in the shot somewhere, record a few seconds, and then take it out and continue shooting. If you can, try and make sure you shoot with the correct exposure and white balance, as it's going to make color correcting your footage a lot easier in post. So once you've got some footage with a few frames of the color checker card in it, you can import the footage into Premiere Pro and begin the color correction. Here we are in Premiere Pro, and I've got this footage in the timeline here of me holding up this color checker card. And over here, I've got the Lumetri scopes enabled. If you don't see these scopes you can come up to the window menu and make sure you've got Lumetri scopes checked. There's different types of scopes that we can enable just right click and then enable these different ones. So there's a lot of different information we can get here about the footage. The first thing we need to do is find a frame where the color card is clearly visible with no reflections on it. So to make this easier I'm going to zoom in to about 100% there. And we're just going to scroll through this footage until we get to a point where there's no reflections. You can see here on this black bar that there's some reflections. So this is not a good frame to use. We'll just scroll through here and we'll try and find a reasonably good frame. So that's a good point to use. Just as a quick tip, once you've found the frame that you're going to use for color correction, hit M on the keyboard and you can see down here that this has added a marker to the clip. So now anytime we want to find the color correction, we can just head back to the marker. This footage was shot in a log profile, in this case Sony S-Log3. So I'm going to add Sony's official S-Log3 to Rec 709 LUT here. Just going to click here, choose browse and then select the LUT. If you didn't shoot in a log profile, that's fine too. The following color correction steps will be the same regardless. Just as a side note, if you are a Sony shooter and you want to be able to shoot in S-Log3, I've got dedicated videos on how to expose S-Log3 and also how to color grade S-Log3. I'll put links to those videos down in the description. Before we go and color correct, we can check our exposure. Just going to scroll across here and we can use these different bars to check the exposure levels. What we're going to do is make use of the Luma waveform. What I'm going to do is disable all of these other ones. And now we've got the Luma waveform showing us all of the dark areas at the bottom and the light areas at the top. Another little tip when working with these color corrector cards is to actually use a mask to isolate the card. The best way to do this is to come over to the effects and search for the crop effect and then drag that down onto the footage. Next we're going to need to open up the effect controls. So I'm just going to come up to window and enable effect controls. And we can see here we've got our Lumetri color instance with the LUT here that we just applied. And here we've got the crop effect. What I'm going to do is make sure we can actually see our footage here. And then I'm going to draw a mask around this area here on the chart. So this is a mask for the crop effect. All we need to do now is increase one of the crop items here. Notice this goes completely black and then click invert. Now we can see in the Luma waveform here, we've got these three bars. This represents the white, this represents the midtones, and this represents the darks. So the middle bar of this card should be about 41 IRE. The S-Log3 in this clip was overexposed. So let's go and get this middle bar to sit correctly at 41. What I'll do is zoom back out and disable the crop effect. 
and we can see what effect that's had on the footage. The Sony LUT that we're using in this case is a low contrast LUT. What this means is that once we've applied the LUT, we can then go and add some more contrast back in post. So this white bar on the left should be about 90 to 100 IRE, and this black bar on the right should be about 0 to 10 IRE. So what we can do is play with the exposure until this is correct. So there's a few different ways we could do this. I'm going to use the curves here. What I'm going to do is modify this line here just to bring down that bottom bit to about the zero to five IRE. And for the whites, I'm going to bring this up to about, we'll start at about 90, 91. And notice we need to also bring down that middle bar. So we need to have a play with this until we get it as we want it. So we've got this black bar at about 4 IRE, this middle bar at about 41 IRE, and this white bar at about 92 IRE. Once again, let's zoom out and then disable the crop. We can see the resulting footage here. So now that we've got a reasonable exposure, we can go and make use of these color chits down the side here. These color chits match up to the boxes in the vector scope. To perform the actual color correction, we're going to make use of a different scope, the vector scope YUV. Just going to enable that and then turn off the Luma waveform. This will just give us a nice big scope here. To make it easier, we can also adjust the mask to show only the color chits that we want. So we're only going to mask these color chits here. I'm also going to just reduce the feather to zero because we don't need any feathering here. And now if we once again re-enable the crop effect, we can see now we've only got these colors. So each of these boxes on the vector scope match up to one of the colors on the color chart here. For example, the magenta box here on the scope represents the magenta on the color card here. The yellow box here represents the yellow chits on the color card. What we want to do now is make sure that all of these lines on the vector scope line up with the color boxes. We want each of these lines to point towards the correct color box and we want each of these lines to be about halfway from the center of the box to the inner square. To do this we can make use of the curves. I'm just going to expand these curves just a bit and we'll scroll down here and we're going to make use of two of these curves. One is the hue versus saturation curve that will allow us to saturate or desaturate specific colors and we're also going to make use of the hue versus hue curve curve, this will allow us to make sure the lines line up to the correct boxes. The first thing we're going to do is add control points to each of these major lines. You can see here that we've got these slightly more prominent lines and we're going to make sure we move the mouse over these and click. Be careful not to accidentally move the mouse when you click otherwise you'll make a correction. So let's just go and do that. And we need to scroll across here to add this final point. Each of these points that we've added match up to one of the colors on the color checker card. We'll do the same thing for the hue versus hue. And once again, scroll across to add this final point. So let's start off with the red. You can see here that the red line is kind of shifting a little bit towards magenta. So the first thing we're going to do is come across to our red point here and we're going to move it up or down to make that line point to the box. Just as a little tip, hold down shift before you click on this and that's going to mean that you can only move up or down. You can't move this point left or right accidentally. As you can see, if I move this around, the line is changing on the vector scope here. So let's go and try and make this point to red somewhere around there. And if you're having trouble with this, what you can do is come up to the same point, in this case red, hold down shift and increase the saturation. And you can see that this line gets shorter and longer. That can help just to line up. Once again, we'll just make sure this lines up somewhere about there. And now we can go and set the saturation. So this dot appears about halfway between the center and the inside red box. Next, we can move on to the magenta line. Once again, we can increase the saturation to make this easier. But notice this is actually spot on at the minute. So we don't actually need to adjust the hue. We just need to adjust the saturation. So it's about halfway between the center and the box. Next, let's look at the blues. If we increase the saturation, once again, I'm holding down shift here to make sure I don't skew the color. You can see this is not too bad. I think we just need to adjust the hue a little bit towards magenta, just a touch. Once again, we can check this with the saturation. So that's not looking too bad. Once again, make sure that that's about halfway between the center and the outside box. I think we just need to tweak the hue just a little bit there. Next, we can do cyan. You can see that the cyan is kind of pointing away from the box towards the blues. So we're going to need to modify the hue of cyan here and push it more towards the box. 
Once again, check the saturation here. You can see that we're still not quite there. That's better. And then once again, reduce the saturation to halfway. Let's take a look at the greens next. You can see this is a little bit off. We'll use the hue versus hue to bring that more towards green. And then just adjust it to about halfway. And then just tweak it. You might have to do a few passes of this just to get it exactly perfect. I'm just doing this really quickly for this demo. And finally, we'll look at the yellows. This is looking pretty good if we just increase the saturation. It's pretty much spot on there. Just gonna make sure that the saturation is about halfway across. So you'll probably wanna spend a bit more time on this than I'm doing here. But when you're happy with it, you can turn off the crop effect and then just zoom out. And you can see a before and after by turning off these curves to see what effect the color correction has had. So now we know we've got a color correct image, we can then go and apply a creative color grade on top of that to get the look and the feel that we want. Let's have a look at this corrected and uncorrected footage now full screen. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications. I'm Jason Roberts and I'll see you in the next one.